The next speaker is Oscar Dowson from the University of Auckland, and he's going to be talking about cows and lakes, <laughs> apparently. So I hope, I hope uh, most people turned up uh, to know what cows have to do with Julia, and not for the jump. Because there won't be any jump in this talk, uh, and there won't be any mathematics in this talk, uh, and you'll have to wait till the end for a photo of a cow. I am, I am a firm believer in uh, a name is everything. And I was, I was thinking the other day that I wrote, I wrote this, this title down when I submitted the talk, but a better name might be uh, Julia Meets Daisy uh, in the field of multi-stage stochastic optimization. But of course, I told this to a few people and they, they groaned and shook their head and said no, so maybe we'll move on. So, uh, so this is New Zealand. Uh, and uh, I grew up on a dairy farm under the little red pin. And if you zoom in, it's near a city called Tauranga. And if you zoom in even further, uh, there's the farm that I grew up on. It's about uh, 100 and something acres. And if you zoom in on that little red dot there, uh, there's a ute driving down the race. Um, and if you zoom in really closely, you can see two little dots uh, sitting on the back of it. And I'm gonna say uh, for the record that one of them is me and one of them is my brother. And so you can see me from space uh, on Google Earth. Um, if you look in the, uh, the other side of the farm, uh, there's a whole lot of little black dots, uh, which are cows. There should be 200 cows in that paddock, but every time I try, and, uh, I try and count them, I only get up to about 100. So I don't know where the other 100 went, but uh, maybe they went for a holiday that day. So that's kind of uh, who I am and, and where I come from. But you're probably all thinking, what on earth is multi-stage stochastic optimization? And so, uh, so we heard earlier this afternoon about uh, the hydrothermal scheduling problem. And that's kind of the lake part uh, of this talk. And basically, uh, we've got some, some reservoirs, some lakes of water and hydro turbines. And we need to decide when to turn the turbine on uh, and make electricity. Uh, but we don't know how much rainfall we're going to have in the future. And um, we're going to have to turn the turbine on to produce electricity to meet some, some demand uh, across the country. Now, in New Zealand, about 60% of our electricity uh, comes from hydro. And of course, if we don't use uh, enough hydro, then we have to meet the rest of that demand with coal. But hydro is a lot cheaper than coal. And so most of the time, we want to use uh, hydroelectricity to kind of meet the demand. But if we're too aggressive uh, in using our water sort of early in the year, then you can think of there might be no rain in the future, and then we either uh, have to uh, use a lot of expensive coal later in the year, or we don't even have enough capacity uh, to meet demand, and then there's blackouts across the country. So we're kind of making decisions in time about when to use our hydro turbine to kind of minimize cost when we don't know the future. So that's the, the lake part of the talk. And uh, the cow part of the talk, or uh, moo, the milk output optimizer, it took me a while to think of that. So I like to think that, uh, that paddocks are like lakes of grass. And I'll just, I'll just stop. Someone once said, okay, so this is like a metaphor, right? No, this is, this is literally what it is. So, so paddocks are, uh, are lakes of grass, uh, and cows are like lakes of energy. And we can turbine grass from our paddock uh, down into the cow. And when we turbine the grass out of the paddock, the amount of grass in the paddock goes down. And when we turbine the grass into the cow, the amount of energy in the cow increases. And then when we turbine the cow, the amount of energy in the, ca in the cow goes down, but we make milk uh, that comes out. Uh, and instead of not knowing how much rain we're going to have in the future, uh, we don't know how much grass we're going to have. And of course, we kind of need to feed the cow to keep it alive. And so if we don't have enough grass, we kind of uh, need to make up the rest of the difference uh, with maize uh, instead of coal. And maize is obviously a whole lot more expensive uh, than grass. So how do we actually uh, solve this? Well, I guess in, in 10 minutes, there's not really enough time. But it's this thing we might have heard before today called uh, stochastic dual dynamic programming. Um, and it can kind of solve these like this point, um, models in time where it's kind of time is discretized we have some, some uncertainty like the random rainfall or grass growth, and we need to choose how much grass to feed the cow, how much fertilizer to use, um, whether to milk the cow or not, and then there's some other, some other things we need like convexity. So how is this done in the past? Well, it kind of turned out that everybody had a model like the hydrothermal scheduling problem or, or MOO, 
and they would go and code a problem specific implementation of this and they'll do it in like uh, ample which is really really slow or C++ which if you want to make changes it's really difficult or Python which is it's okay but it's still a little bit too slow and that seems like a really bad idea we kind of having to reinvent the wheel every time and so why not do it in Julia well it, it turns out in the last year lots of people had the same idea and uh, lots of people have done it that's me, but uh, calling it stdp.jl is a really bad name. It kind of doesn't explain what it is. Um, and so I propose calling it MOA, uh, which is a multi-stage optimization application. And you're probably wondering uh, what MOA is. Um, and basically, it's this extinct bird from New Zealand that is essentially like a three meter tall giant chicken. Um, and so before people came to New Zealand, uh, there were no mammals. And so the birds kind of forgot how to fly. And you can imagine that you're a person that's just come to New Zealand and you're pretty hungry and there are three meter tall giant chickens walking around that don't know who you are, you rapidly hunt them to extinction. But I think calling it more and kind of making a bad name and then uh, we could have more as our logo uh, for the package. So uh, if you can come up with a better name, I'd love to hear it. And so more is essentially a, a jump extension that makes it really flexible and we can kind of implement the hydro, hydro scheduling problem or the or moo kind of as models that use that use more. But uh, you're probably wondering, is it any good? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, the long answer is uh, we have a, a hydrothermal scheduling problem that's hard coded in C++ uh, just to solve that one problem. Um, our generic Julia implementation forms pretty similar to it, but it's much easier to uh, to prototype new models or uh, or to modify our old problems. So we can add, do things like uh, add in new decisions. So maybe, maybe instead of maize, I want to uh, feed the cow like uh, palm kernel, or I want to you know, change different things about the problem, and that's much easier to do. Um, we can also uh, yeah, test new heuristics to speed up the whole solution process. So basically, I didn't want to go into too much depth in, uh, in 10 minutes. So what should you, what did you take away from this talk? Well, if you know what SDDP is, cool. Uh, come and talk to me afterwards. Um, if you don't know what SDDP is, then I hope from this talk you'll learn that someday in the future New Zealand dairy farmers are going to use Julia to help them make better decisions uh, under uncertainty. And uh, there's the obligatory uh, pictures of cows. Uh, you'll notice there is one picture with a sheep. <laughs> I was in Austria and I couldn't find, a, couldn't find a cow so I took a picture of a sheep instead. Thanks very much. <laughs>